What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at Noah More Parties. You can find my written work and my running back rankings for Dynasty Leagues, Devi Leagues, and Rookie Drafts at NoahMoreParties.com. And today I I took my running back rankings from NoahMoreParties.com, my Dynasty running back rankings, and I compared them to the community-fueled rankings over at KeepTradeCut.com, compared them, mashed them together, crunched the numbers, and found three running backs who I believe are fantastic values currently in Dynasty, Dynasty startups, Dynasty trade market, whatever it is. These are three guys who I view as excellent buy lows, you know, just just great values at running back in Dynasty. Let's get into it. The first guy is Austin Eckler, who I have at RB6, but who is the current RB12 over at Keep Trade Cut. Uh, and I, I feel like the case here is fairly easy. Austin Eckler is coming off four straight RB1 level seasons, two of them in a row the last two years, 2022 and 2021, over 21 points per game. He was the RB1 in fantasy last season. There's a new offensive coordinator in Los Angeles, Kellen Moore, but I don't know that we should necessarily expect that to be a bad thing, specifically as it pertains to Austin Eckler, because number one, Austin Eckler has seen decent volume in the last few years on the ground, like right above 200 carries in the last two seasons, which is good, but like if they run the ball more, he, he you know, there's room for him to have more volume. It's not like he's had 300 carries. Like there's there's room for his his role on the ground to grow, and if they pass the ball more, Justin Herbert likes to check the ball down to Austin Eckler. That doesn't hurt. I like fluctuations in either direction and pass run ratio. I feel like are kind of a wash for for Eckler specifically. And Kellen Moore's been a successful offensive coordinator. Like th- this is a good hire. The Dallas offense from 2019 to 2022, top six in the NFL in points three times, top eight in the NFL in yards three times. They, they just had a good offense working with similar levels of offensive talent, I think, as what the Chargers are going to have. Dak Prescott, Justin Herbert. Herbert's probably a little bit better, but those are like similarly uh, talented quarterbacks. And then, you know, the wide receiver room there in Dallas, Amari Cooper, a young CD Lamb, Michael Gallup, you know, Dalton, Sch- like guys kind of in and out there, talent, some of it aging, some of it up and coming. Like, it's a similar situation with Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Quentin Johnson, like these guys in Los Angeles, a similar, you know, kind of tier of weapons that he's he's got to work with, a similarly talented quarterback. Like, this should be a good offense, similar to what they had in Dallas the last few years. And Austin Eckler's currently being drafted as the RB3 on underdog right now in best ball drafts. Like, the community is fully expecting him to have another elite fantasy season Another elite fantasy season feels well worth a selection in t- inside the top five, six-ish running backs in Dynasty, where he's currently being selected as, like, the RB12, back where, like, you know, Najee Harris, that gets you closer to, like, Nick Chubb range. Austin Eckler is just better than the guys in that range as far as what you can expect from him immediately. There is some slight, like, age-based risk that he's washed, but that equally applies to someone like Christian McCaffrey, who's currently being valued as the RB4 over on keep trade cut. So, you know, if Eckler, if we're just, dis- if we're downgrading Eckler because he's old and might get washed, like there are other old running backs who are being drafted highly, who, you know, even in Christian McCaffrey's case have not produced to the level that Austin Eckler has in recent years. And Austin Eckler was definitively not cooked last year. He ranked sixth in the NFL in rushing yards over expected per attempt. He had a 91st percentile box adjusted efficiency rating. He had an 83rd percentile relative success rate. He was excellent on the ground. We know he's ex- excellent as a receiver. He's just an awesome player in a situation that should continue to be awesome for him being drafted as if he's not going to score elite fantasy points again when he probably will. I really like Austin Eckler at RB12 prices. I'd be willing to pull him up near the top five. The next guy I want to talk about is Damian Pierce, who is my RB11, is the RB17 on Keep Trade Cut. He averaged 12.8 PPR points per game last year, was like the RB20, I believe, in fantasy on a per game basis. But that's more points per game than Travis Etienne scored on a team that scored 115 fewer points and gained 1,255 fewer yards than what Etienne's team did. So Damian Pierce was doing more than ETN with less. ETN's like the RB7 in Dynasty right now, RB8 in Dynasty, something like that. Damian Pierce might just be a better player, capable of putting up 
equivalent or better fantasy production on a worse team. Like, he's a beast. He's much more similar in, like, workload, insulation, and age to, like, the Ramondre Stevenson, Najee Harris type guys who are being drafted in the low-end RB1 range right now in Dynasty. Like, three down, just monsters, you know, who need to be supplemented by, like, a breather back in, you know, Jalen Warren or Damien Harris slash James Robinson or, uh, you know, they got Devin Singletary now in Houston. Guys like that, like, these guys don't need to be supplemented in heavy ways with, like, role players to do specific things because they can do everything and handle large workloads. Damien Pierce is a lot more similar to those guys, the Ramondre Stevensons, the Najee Harrises, than he is to the guys that he's actually being drafted near, like Javante Williams, J.K. Dobbins, DeAndre Swift. We don't know if any of those guys will ever be workhorses. Damian Pierce already is one. But the real point here is that I just think Damian Pierce is really good, and I think there's a chance that he could continue to get even better. He averaged 4.27 yards per carry last year, which is in the 56th percentile going back to 2016, slightly above average, not fantastic. But that was despite a an offensive line that, according to Pro Football Focus, ranked 29th in run blocking grade. Like, they were a very bad offensive line, and Damian Pierce posted above average efficiency. His team relative efficiency numbers, 98th percentile in box adjusted efficiency rating, 84th percentile in relative success rate. He was elite at contributing value, contributing consistency on a per carry basis above and beyond what the other running backs in his offense were producing. And he entered the league with above average numbers in box adjusted efficiency rating and relative success rate from his time in college. 51st percentile in box adjusted efficiency rating, but 93rd in RSR. Like he's, he's been elite, elite as a rookie in the NFL and going back to his time as a running back in the SEC at producing positive outcomes on a consistent basis. Like he is just a chain moving back. He has been in college. He was in the NFL. Uh, and now the Texans added two offensive linemen to free agency. They drafted a center in the second round of the draft. Like, it can't get much worse than it was situationally in Houston last year. Those additions to the offensive line could help Damian Pierce's, you know, kind of raw efficiency numbers as he continues to be good in the context of whatever situation he's in. And they obviously added a potential franchise quarterback in C.J. Stroud. The, the weapons here are still not great, but... They were bad last year. Now they added Dalton Schultz, Tank Dell, John Mitch. John Mechie's probably going to be back. Like, the offense should be improved, which should a lot, like, a rising tide lifts all boats, especially at a position like running back that depends a lot on, situ on situational factors for efficiency and production. Damian Pierce should be the beneficiary of that. I also believe he has some untapped receiving potential. He was used really dynamically in college, split out wide and in the slot frequently um, on a per snap basis. He was targeted downfield. He had like a almost a two-yard dot, I believe. Like, I think James Cook was the only guy in last year's class who was used more dynamically in those ways as a receiver than Damian Pierce was. And Damian Pierce is a 220-pound, like, in-between-the-tackles thumper. Like, he is a very versatile player. And last season as a rookie, he was targeted 28% more often on a per-route basis than like the NFL average for running backs. He was earning targets at a high rate. He saw a nearly 20% increase in the amount of routes he was running on a per game basis from the, the first half of his rookie year to the second half of his rookie year. So they scaled up his involvement in the passing game. Uh, the, they added Devin Singletary, but he's not a great receiver. Like he should just kind of be a breather back for Damian Pierce. And there's not a lot of other guys here on this offense who are, you know, like pure receiving backs. Uh, I think Rex, Rex Burkhead is still on the team, who was kind of the guy there for them last year. But like I said, Pierce got his involvement in the receiving game, scaled up as the year went on. There are just multiple ways that Damian Pierce could improve upon an already really strong rookie season, whether that's situational factors, just making things easier on him, whether that's being used in the receiving game more. Like there's, there's just multiple avenues to him improving as a player and as a fantasy asset, and I think he can do it. The last guy I want to talk about is James Conner, who is my RB24 in my dynasty rankings, but is the RB40 on Keep Trade Cut right now. And I, I, I could be convinced that I'm too high on James Conner. Like, RB24 is pretty high. I could be convinced that he deserves to be more in, like, the RB30, RB32 range, somewhere in there. But he's a back-to-back -back RB1 being valued in the same range in Dynasty as guys like Tank Bigsby, Tajay Spears, who we've never seen them be good in the NFL. Uh, one of them doesn't have an ACL in one of his knees. And Tank Bigsby has been super inefficient the last few years at Auburn. Like, we haven't seen him be good in two years. Tajay Spears has health issues. Like, these are not 
guarantee things. And James Conner is being valued the same as them in Dynasty, despite him being an uber producer the last couple of years in the NFL. His peers in the NFL are guys like Aaron Jones, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Joe Mixon. Those guys are being valued on Keep Trade Cut right now at RB27, RB31, RB36, and RB25, despite the fact that James Conner outscored three out of four of them last season. He also had a bounce pack from, from an efficiency standpoint. He averaged like three like 3.8 yards per carry in 2021. He had like an 80% box adjusted efficiency rating that year also. So it wasn't just that the offensive line was bad. He was actively producing much less on a per carry basis than the other backs in Arizona in 2021. But in 2022, 61st percentile in box adjusted efficiency rating, actively good. And he was 82nd percentile in relative success rate last year. That's his fourth straight year above the 64th percentile in that metric. No matter like how efficient he is on a per carry basis, he could average 3.9 yards per carry again, but I'm pretty confident that he's going to add value on the ground through dependability, through moving the chains, through like consistently churning out positive outcomes, even if his carries don't have like a high ceiling to them. He's not going to be like a big play guy. And guys like that are valuable in the NFL because coaches want to stay ahead of the chains. They want to stay on schedule on offense. James Conner allows the Cardinals to do that. He's been doing it his entire career and he's a pass catcher. He had 58 targets last year. That's really nice involvement in the passing game, especially for a guy playing with a running quarterback or playing with a running quarterback in Kyler Murray. He also just plays a ton and they added nobody to this backfield. 70.5% snap share last season, 71.7% opportunity share, 90th percentile route participation. He almost never comes off the field. I understand this is a different coaching staff. Things might be a little bit different, but those numbers indicate that there's a lot of wiggle room here. Those numbers, especially relative to where he's being drafted right now, there's a ton of wiggle room where he could scale back his involvement in the offense and still deliver value at his current RB40 prices in Dynasty because they didn't add much. Like, I I like Keontae Ingram as a player. I liked him as a prospect. I don't know if he's actually good in the NFL. He wasn't last year and he didn't play much. Like, it could be that they could just run it back with the same sort of situation this year. Even the Kyler Murray injury isn't much of a death sentence for James Conner based on his historical production in games without Kyler Murray. He's played in eight games without Kyler in Arizona in the last two years. He averaged 21.3 PPR points per game in those eight games. That that per game production would have made him the RB2 overall in fantasy on a per game basis last season. Like he's been elite in fantasy without Kyler. Like it, I don't think Kyler being gone is a problem for James Conner specifically. He gives you a really nice shot at high end win now production for dirt cheap prices in Dynasty. I don't understand why he's currently going at RB40. Trade for James Conner. Thanks for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Peace.